What is open access? It's free online access. Free means toll-free. You don't have to pay in order to access it. And uh, it's immediate and permanent. It's not something that's delayed or embargoed for months or years. And it's not something that, just, uh, that you have access to just for a few days or weeks. It's permanent. It's immediate. And everything that comes with the, ter the online territory, that includes uh, uh, the uh, access to reading it on screen or else uh, downloading it, storing it, printing off a hard copy for yourself, uh, data crunching it, and so on. That's open access. Open access to what? The primary target is the 2.5 million articles published every year in 25,000 peer-reviewed journals in all disciplines. Those are without exception author giveaways written only for usage and impact, not for royalties. On the right side of the page you'll see things that are optional. Books are not exception free, as Cory Doctorow will surely agree. Many authors don't want to make their uh, books freely accessible online. They're looking for royalties and they're not sure that making them freely accessible online won't interfere with loyalties, royalties and that applies to the other categories you see on the right as well. Data is also a special case. About 25,000 peer-reviewed journals are published worldwide in all disciplines and all languages. They publish about 2.5 million articles per year. Most universities and research institutions can only afford to subscribe to a fraction, a small fraction, of those 25,000 journals. That means that all those two and a half million articles are accessible only to a fraction of their potential users. That means that research is having only a fraction of its potential usage and impact. And that, in turn, means that research is achieving only a fraction of its potential productivity and progress. In the paper era, there was no way to remedy this. But in the web era, there is a way. Open access provides free web-wide access to research journal articles. Research that is freely accessible on the web has 25% to 250% greater research impact. In 2001, Lawrence found for computer science articles that those that were available for free online were um, cited uh, over three times as often as those that were not. Lawrence also found that the size of the open access citation advantage was, greatest, uh, was greater as you got into the higher citation ranges. That means more cite citable articles benefit more from being open access. And that's consistent with the fact that uh, the top 10% of articles tend to receive about 90% of citations. We've since shown that uh, the open access impact advantage that Lawrence found in computer science is not just true in computer science, but in every field that we've tested in sciences, in social sciences, in engineering, in humanities, in um, biology. Don't make uh, too much of the uh, difference in magnitude here because that varies from year to year. But the point is that it's always positive. The open access articles always have an advantage of, of from 25% to over 250% in citations. If 100% of research articles were freely accessible, then the usage, impact, productivity, and progress of research would be maximized. There are two ways to make research open access. The golden way is for publishers to convert all their journals into open access journals. We call this gold open access or gold OA. The green way is for researchers to deposit all their published journal articles in their own institution's open access repository. That's green OA. And here is how green OA self-archiving works. The research impact cycle goes like this. First the research is done, then it's written up, submitted to a journal, peer reviewers referee it, 
It's revised by the author, sometimes re-refereed and re-reviewed. Uh, re and then finally, if it's accepted, it becomes the postprint. It's certified as published by the journal. And then researchers can access the postprint if their university has a, subs uh, an, uh, a subscription to the journal. And then new impact cycles can begin. This research impact cycle depends, however, on how many users can access the research output. And that, in turn, depends on whether their institutions can afford to subscribe to it. This limited subscription-based access can be supplemented by self-archiving the postprint, that is, the final referee draft, in the author's own institutional repository as follows. Providing green open access just means doing the keystrokes to deposit the author's final uh, refereed postprint so that not just subscribers but anyone on the web can uh, use and build upon it, thereby maximizing its research impact and the progress and impact of research itself. But only about 15% of the annual 2.5 million uh, research articles are being made freely accessible on the web spontaneously today by authors by doing these keystrokes. Gold open access publishing depends on the publishing community. Whereas green open access self-archiving depends only on the research community. This is something that the research community is in a position to do for itself. The research community cannot require the publishing community to convert to gold open access publishing. But the research community can itself convert to green open access. Southampton University has created the free ePrint software to allow all universities to create their own institutional repositories very cheaply and easily. The software is free and the only expense is uh, the, the, the time to set up the repository, some sysad time to set it up, and a little maintenance time. ePrints is the first uh, such software. It's used all over the world. Uh, it's also the model of, from which uh, DSpace was cloned. But I think uh, ePrints is far more powerful and functional for open access uses. ePrints repositories as well as DSpace repositories are all compliant with the OAI Open, A Open Archives Initiative protocol for metadata harvesting. OAI compliance means that all those distributed repositories are interoperable with one another. Their metadata can be harvested and jointly searched as if their contents were all in one central repository. But creating institutional repositories is only a necessary condition, not a sufficient condition, for providing 100% open access, green open access. There are many repositories, but there are few deposits, so those depositories are mostly empty of uh, open access's target content because deposit mandates are still few. I'll be discussing mandates to deposit on the part of institutions and funders next. Only about 15% of institutional research output is being self-archived spontaneously today. By spontaneously I mean without being mandated to be deposited. It's of course helpful to provide incentives to self-archives such as download statistics, publicity, help from librarians in depositing, or even small financial inv incentives to authors. But Arthur Sales studies in Australia have shown that incentives are not sufficient and can only increase self-archiving to about 30%. The only effective way to guarantee 100% self-archiving is for universities and research funders to make the self-archiving of published research articles an administrative requirement, a mandate. This is a talk about open access and how to provide it.